Well, it's about time we actually tried to tackle this problem that we've got with the roof line where it joins into the clamshell over the engine. It's not really a clamshell, I guess it's just an engine cover, but either way, we still need to close up this gap so we don't just get all the world of weather going straight down and sitting on top of the engine and playing havoc with whatever in there. Now you can see it is quite a sizable gap. If I just use this vernier and put that down, it is just under 20 mil, so 19 and change from the top edge here all the way down into the deepest point in the center. Now this has happened because when I folded this over and made the panel, I was trying to get it all to fit nicely and unfortunately it created a dip between the outside edges as it scoops in, which is a little bit frustrating, but there is no way we can fix this right now. This is too deep into the project. So we're gonna have to fill this in and do it a different way, which I'm not too thrilled about, but what I don't wanna do is just completely fill this up with a really heavy filler or something like that. That's not going to be a good way to do it. You could if you really absolutely positively had to, but it is not the right way to do it. And I don't even think the way I'm going to do it is the right way to do it. So this is what I'm going to use as a dam across the back edge. This is a section of 50 millimeter tubing. We actually used this across the center of the um, the cage behind the dash to, to basically pin the A-pillars nice and wide apart. Now I've sectioned this out just over 20 mil tall, so we'll have a little bit of, uh, of excess in the center that we can trim down to. But at the moment, one edge is really nice and straight and the other edge is a little bit wavy, but that doesn't matter because ultimately the bottom edge is gonna get cut to match this. And you can see I've already started marking the lines on over this side, so it'll sit in underneath there. Now if I drop this edge down a little bit further at the outside, you might be able to see this should both give us a dam at the back that we can fill this up with some expanding foam or similar uh, to, to just bring this up to the level without adding too much weight um, and really having to cure a vast amount of, uh, of filler or bondo up the top of here. Um, but it will also bring the, um, the cresting edge a little bit further forward, which will allow this panel to open and rotate forward a little bit smoother. So. Hopefully, this is going to get cut down, we can weld it in, and then see whether or not this is going to work. Well, that's tacked in place and mostly looking pretty good. You've obviously just seen us do a little bit of concussive um, calibration to the uh, finer shape of it. Unfortunately, just around this section here, the skin isn't really folded up against it very tight. The skin's a bit like this where it should be like that. So we're going to take this off in a little while for some other changes. And while we've got it, we're just going to pinch that skin over a bit more. With that piece tacked on, we're going to put a little bit of silicon on it once it's cooled down, just so we can seal all the way along. We don't want to seam weld the whole thing like we might have done before and just fought it because that's definitely a fool's game at this point. And it's just not the time to be spending a lot of time outside fighting with a piece of steel. So in the meantime, we're going to do something a little bit more interesting with this big sheet of aluminium. We're going to build a diffuser. Now, this is half of a sheet that I cut down to 500 mil, top to bottom, and the diffuser, or the first part of the diffuser, is going to fit between the exhaust tips on the back of the car. So it's going to come up nice and high from the floor level where the um, engine, sorry, the gearbox mount comes onto the very back cross member, and it's going to come all the way up to just below where the reverse slight and fog light cluster is. Now the distance between the exhaust tips is 680 mil, so we're going to make this 640 mil edge to edge um, and then rotate it round uh, or roll it round a piece of pipe so we get a nice large radius. We don't want a tight radius because we might get some dip in the middle like we've had before, so we'd rather have a nice big wide radius for the corners. Now it needs to be about 29 centimeters or 290 mil tall at the very back. So we're going to have to make it a little bit bigger than that across the far edge here so that when we cut it at a tangent to the angle across this side, it will be the right height. And I can show you that nice and easily with this one I've already done. 
So these are 640 mil apart, these two lines, and this is where we're gonna be putting the bend in in a second around a piece of tube that we're just gonna clamp across the bench. So we got the metal bender out so that we could make up a couple of extra panels to rivet onto the diffuser, the main diffuser panel. This one sits at the back and goes around the light, the, the fog light and the reversing light unit, which sits just in this gap. And this goes, these two sections at the side go all the way up. And this is how we're gonna mount the very back edge onto our crossbar that holds obviously the, the reversing light and the fog light in. The other panel we've made is this one. This has two bends in it, as you can see, and this goes at the very bottom edge of the diffuser and actually hooks around the crossbar at the very back. So there's obviously going to be a couple of bits we need to notch out to get around the uh, gearbox mounting section uh, and a couple of the stays. So we'll pop those in there, but we're actually going to mount this from the bottom this way into the very bottom of the car rather than the inside edge. But this is just to locate it in the right place so we get a nice constant measurement front to back for when we drill those holes. So these are just going to get riveted onto the panel now. We'll offer it up against the car and show you what it actually looks like in place. So now we've got the diffuser in, we can just mark this up under here. You can see this one fits on the back. So we just need to get this on the center, and work out exactly where it fits there. And then we can put a couple of line, a couple of holes across the back and the other panel is gonna go somewhere. It's not gonna go right at the very back edge because this edge is actually gonna protrude beyond the edge of the uh, rear of the car by about five or 10 mil. This one wants to sit slightly further back so that this rear, sorry, the yeah, the rear face of this panel goes onto the inboard face of the crossbar and obviously the light sits in here. So we'll put this one in once we've got that one on, mark this up, take it all off again, and then drill and rivet that. Well, mistakes were made. We looked at the geometric net that we thought we were gonna need and uh, it was gonna be a tangent off the, bottom, off the bottom edge. And it was, however, this was not the, gonna be the bottom edge. And I did not think far enough ahead and unfortunately Chris did not correct me either. So we are both kind of culpable on this. Um, it's not the end of the world, it's, it just slices back slightly and it really doesn't look that bad, it actually looks quite good. Um, so as much as it wasn't the plan, I'm not going to bother remaking it out of the other sheet, it's just not worth it. Um, we've also got the fill panel underneath the uh, rear arm, uh, the rear beam, so that now holds this in really nice and firm. There's a tiny bit of flex like at the very edge there, but realistically that is nothing, so that is all good. Now I'm going to move the camera around to the side and you'll see what the problem is with the backslash and where we're going to run the uh, floor angle to cut the bottom edge of this off. Now the car's in the air at the back, but not the front, which is why this is also on an angle that way. But basically this is clamped onto the floor under the seats, runs all the way back, comes across the bottom of the arb mount right at the back, which is the lowest point of the floor. The uh, middle section that this uh, is actually gonna screw onto is slightly higher than that uh, to account for the um, gearbox mount. So we're going with the absolute lowest point of the floor and that just runs straight across back here. So gonna mark that up and cut that off and then we're gonna move on to putting in the second and third piece of the diffuser which will come off the side and down onto the edge which I am also quite looking forward to putting in. Well it rained last night so we had to take the camera inside but we did not rest on our laurels and we continued work on the extension pieces for the diffuser. Now these have got a triangular section that fits onto the framework at the back, it just bolts in through the bottom or it will do once we've drilled the holes and it fits onto the side of the main part of the diffuser here. And then this panel which is bent up as you can see forms the actual um, diffuser opening at the back of the car. So this fits in like that 
and it's just going to pop rivet onto again the inside edge here and the outside edge which at the moment is just friction fit onto the side of the car but will be screwing on to the framework the, the vertical piece of framework that uh, the bottom piece attaches to as well. Now what we haven't done yet is finally set the angle at the back piece of the diffuser. We're going to wait until it's all screwed in or bolted in and then angle it so that it gives a similar amount of spacing around the exhaust tip to this edge here and we'll do the same on the other side as well. And then finally measure them both up, make sure they are even because we don't want it looking lopsided and then pop rivet the rest of it together and then that is the diffuser done. Well, this has taken a little bit longer than I expected. We were really, really contemplating finishing off these extra side pieces last night um, at about five o'clock, just as it was starting to go dark. We thought, yeah, we'll definitely get through this. No. No, these took quite a bit of doing. And then the infill panels as well that run around here and seal up around the exhaust, they took another good few hours. So I think if we'd stayed yeah. on last night, I think we'd have probably still been going when the sun came up. Yeah, despite the fact we managed to get these bottom panels done, as I say, we thought about putting them in but no that was definitely the right call to go dinner yeah dinner. dinner but this is much much better as I say we've been on this for about five or six hours today so far um, mount mounting this rear panel in and f making these infill the infill panels actually took a lot longer than I expected and you might be wondering well why didn't you just do it in one long piece you had the giant piece of aluminium and the reason for that is because I was fairly certain I was going to make a mistake and I did, hmm. because where this one fits really nicely around the edge here, there is a finger hole out this side, so I'm going to have to um, try and magic something to try and close that up. But that's a very good reason why I don't make giant panels anymore. Well, I say anymore, not that I really have anyway. The last one yeah. I tried to do was the um, engine cover, and I still managed to get that wrong the first time, so my point stands. Hmm. We don't do that anymore. So a few days ago, we mentioned that the engine had to be back in in three days, ready yep. for me leaving again. And uh, I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Today is the third day, so the engine can go back in and then we don't have to do anything tomorrow morning. So I, I think that's um, objective complete. As long as the engine yep. goes in tonight, we can put the roof up back on as well, the roof, the engine cover back on because that's done enough. We don't need to weld or do anything else on the top. So that's all clear. Obviously, we've got the window in last episode. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the amount of stuff we got done for this trip with the engine being out. Yeah. Um, the engine will have to come out again, I am sure, in future. But for now, we can put the engine back in, and I'll probably end up doing that uh, expansion tank pipe next time. Yeah, probably. I will say, as the end of uh, at that, being as it's the end of a fairly intense <laughs> sprint of work for us, yeah. finishing off this diffuser is a really, really big win for me. Yeah. Now we do still have a bit more work to do. Obviously, we've got to get the engine in, and that's. Oh, kind of a slog, <laughs> but I can sit and I can stare at this and I can cry with happiness <laughs> yes. a little bit. So with that, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the episode, give us a like. It always helps with the algorithm. Let us know what you think of our diffuser mess down here. It's, uh, it's not quite perfect, but it is nearly there. Every comment does also help the algorithm. I can preemptively answer some of them. If anyone is wondering <laughs> if we've done any aero design or CAD or anything on this, no. No. No, we have not. No, we have not. We're just eyeballing it. Yeah. Head over to shop.pedalbox.show if you want to support us by buying some merch. We've got stickers, long sleeve t-shirts, hoodies, hats, all sorts of things over there. And if you want, you can join us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow, where you can join us from as little as a dollar a month. Patreons get access to the episodes earlier than they go live on YouTube, and you also get discount in the Pedalbox store. Yeah, you can also jump on Discord and join us in there real time. We do post pictures of various projects from time to time as yep. we're working. We have been putting some pictures up of this today as we've been going on, although not as many as we probably could have, but frankly, this has been a slog and it's cold. Yeah, this is where our Patreon viewers are going to actually see the <laughs> yes. time lag because already yeah. there's pictures of this in Discord in real time as we say this. Yeah. So when this episode goes out sometime next year... If you've just joined at the back of this episode, you might have to scroll up a bit yeah. to see the pictures. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching, and we will see you next time working on something. I don't really know what, because I'm going to go and have a nap.